All right, students. So today we are actually going to talk about physical weathering processes. Now, um, just to reiterate quickly, weathering is a process whereby rocks are in fact disintegrated, all right, into finer constituents in situ by physical weather, um, chemical as well as biological processes. Today we'll be focusing on physical processes. Just to highlight very quickly, physical weathering processes are inclusive of frost action, thermal expansion and contraction, pressure release, and exfoliation. Now, first, yeah, I'd like to talk about frost action. All right, and frost action is, in fact, a physical weathering process whereby um, water, right, liquid water, basically collects within the cracks or the crevices of rocks. And this type of process is, in fact, associated with areas where there are, in fact, seasonal changes, all right? Um, what happens is that temperature during the daytime can be relatively warm and also in the nighttime it can also be relatively cool. But generally speaking, we know for sure that this particular physical weathering process is in fact associated with area of seasonal changes where during these summer months, right, or the warm months, you will have water, liquid water, pervading over the surface of the land or the rocks. Now, the water will actually settle it with, on the cracks or the crevices of these rocks, but, however, but we must bear in mind as time progresses, um, the seasons change. We could actually transcend from spring to summer, which is relatively warm, to autumn, which is cooler, and by extension, you reach winter. The water eventually freezes. Now, we should bear in mind, when water freezes, it becomes ice. Ice expands by 10%. As it expands, it will literally, and I should say physically, push apart these rock structures, and this process is repeated over and over and over, all right, from season to season, year to year. As time progresses, these rock structures can become so much weakened to the point where um, they are further disintegrated in situ, as you can see, in the same, relatively in the same location, they are broken apart, all right? So the process of frost action is, in fact, a very distinctive physical weathering process. Now, the second process, physical weathering process, I would like to talk about is thermal expansion and contraction. Now, thermal as is, is associated or conceptualized with warmth or heat. And objects which are, in fact, subject to warmth or heat, they will tend to expand, right? Even at its slightest. In, in that given regard, we should also bear in mind that... Uh, um, objects can also be subjected to contraction or somewhat shrinkage, right, when it becomes relatively cool. Now, areas where you'll find thermal contraction and expansion are, in fact, areas which are associated with high diurnal range of temperatures. Now, class, when I'm saying high diurnal range of temperatures, I'm talking about areas which basically has in fact a very distinctive maximum and minimum temperature so if i were to tell you an area which has a high diurnal range of temperature we are in fact talking about very arid or desert-like conditions because their maximum temperature which is basically primarily in the daytime would in fact be very very high but the minimum temperature can actually drop very very low in some instances, can actually drop below zero degrees Celsius. All right, and we should keep that in consideration. Now, assuming the diurnal range is the maximum minus the minimum temperature, right? All right, if I were to tell you in a desert, the maximum temperature is approximately 45 degrees Celsius minus the minimum temperature, assuming the minimum temperature is, is an estimated uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius, all right? That means 45, a minus by a minus is a plus, plus 10 degrees Celsius would actually be what? 55 degrees Celsius. These are areas with very, very large diurnal range of temperature. To put it in perspective, minus 10 all the way to zero, that's 10 degrees Celsius. From zero now, all the way up to 45 degrees, that is 45 degrees Celsius. 45 and 10 is an estimated 55 degrees Celsius. So in, in one given day, 
temperatures can change by, it has a range of 55 degrees Celsius. Now, this is just an example I'm going to use. But students, if you were to take into consideration this factor, if temperature varies so dramatically, when rocks are in fact subjected to extreme heat, but in nighttime they are subjected to extreme coldness, they can be easily broken apart, they can be easily weathered. All right? Your parents will always tell you do not eat um, very hot food and drink very, very cool drinks. I'm sure they would have told you that in the past, right? But when that happens, class, sometimes your, your teeth will actually develop fractures. In the same respect, the extreme heat would actually basically bake the rocks, as you can see from this image here. But when the same rock is, in fact, subjected to extreme cold, especially nighttime, all right, these fractures or stresses can become pronounced. Over a very long period of time, or an extended period of time, these stresses or fractures can become even greater and much more distinctive, given the fact that it may happen continuously from day to day, all right, over an extended period of time. And look at what happens. These rocks can be subjected to breakage. All right. Now, um, the third uh, physical weathering process I would like to talk about is one which is associated with pressure release. And this is, in fact, pressure release, as we can see in the screen here, pressure release here, right? Now, whenever you think along that, that process, the release of something re re is generally conceptualized as something being removed or allowed to exit. In the same respect, pressure release is in fact associated with the fact that um, this particular pressure or weight on the surface of existing rocks can in fact be removed. Look here, if you're on the screen here for me, please. If you observe, this first part of this image is actually showing you as an overburden or layers, layers of materials, whether it be sediments, rocks, debris, this, this specific layer may actually have a specific weight and it will actually compress this existing rock at the bottom. Now, students, this rock is actually under pressure. However, as time progresses, all right, due to the processes of erosion and um, uh, further mass movement and whatnot, this overburden can be reduced. It can be washed away, it can be blown away, leaving behind all right, less weight to be pressing down upon the existing rock. Now, students, we should bear in mind that rocks, they naturally um, tend to expand, yes, but given the fact that they are rigid, they are, they are solid, all right, it cannot basically expand. It is not as malleable or bendable as we think it can be. As a result of that, once this pressure is released or removed from the surface, the rocks expand and develop stresses. As you can see, these are stresses develop on the surface as it expands because there is less compressional force acting upon it. As time progresses, even more materials are in fact removed, uh, resulting in further fractures to become much more uh, profound. And this existing rock structure, it expands so much that large areas can in fact be greatly um, subjected to major fractures on the surface of the land. All right, so pressure release is very, very distinctive as a matter of fact. Um, this process is also associated with areas where um, the rates of erosion is in fact very high. Um, you also have rates of uh, mass movement and stuff like that. And these rocks which exist below, the buried rocks, they are often associated with what we call intrusive rocks. Most of the times, volcanic rocks, which can be buried or perhaps below the surface of the earth, which are in fact intrusive rocks, they can be brought onto the surface, given the fact that overburden or much surface materials are removed or washed away. Now, they are very, very resistant rocks. That means they cannot easily be broken apart. However, this is just a start. Nothing lasts forever, as a matter of fact. These same very resistant rocks, which are in fact embedded below the Earth's surface, which is in fact now exposed on the surface, given the overburden removal, these rocks themselves can develop major stresses and in fact break apart or weather. They are weathered physically because this is in fact a physical removal of weight, overburden or pressure being released. Now, last but not least, I would like to talk about exfoliation. All right, and exfoliation 
Um, I'm sure many of you would actually know what exfoliating creams and stuff are. X mean on the outer. All right. Um, the exfoliation concept that is associated here, which refers to the outer breakage of uh, existing rocks, all right, um, which resembles that like an olean being peeled from the outer layers first. Okay. Now exfoliation is actually which something which is a is a physical weathering uh, process, which is in fact associated with areas which receive a lot of high temperatures. All right. Desert conditions can also be associated as well as arid or dry areas. So temperatures must be significantly high. Now, given the fact that the sun might be very, 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 very hot, all right, the heat of the sun might actually affect existing rocks. And some of these rocks might be on the surface of the land, all right, like this. Now, bear in mind, these rocks, as the heat affects the surfaces of these rocks, all right, they become desiccated to a very, very large extent. That being said, stresses develop just on the surfaces of these rocks. All right, because this is a major point of contact with respect to the sun. All right. And, that, and this simply means that these stresses can eventually become so pronounced that they can actually um, relate to the surface of the structure. And as time progresses, they form block -like formation. these block-like formations tend to be removed or broken apart. All right. So the outer layers of these rocks are in fact largely affected by the extremities with respect to temperature, especially referring to high temperatures and given the arid or very dry conditions. All right, students, this, occur, this particular process occurs in areas like say um, the American Midwest, areas which are relatively dry, um, certain parts like say temperate, um, sorry, certain areas within the um, very close to desert-like conditions and stuff like that may also be experiencing this. It doesn't matter whichever continent we belong to, with the exception, of course, Antarctica, which is very, very cool. All right, but we are referring to dry, hot conditions which can favor this type of process to occur to take place. The screen, this is an example. As you can see, the outer layers are in fact um, very much subjected to peeling, right? Um, I use the word peeling in inverted commas here because the outer layers are in fact being removed. This is a, a layer of granite. All right, granite is a type of intrusive rock, all right, um, intrusive igneous rock to be exact, and the outer layers of the rock is in fact subjected to um, exfoliation. Now, granite could also be subjected not only to exfoliation, but also to um, uh, pressure release, all right, and as a result of that, even though it is said to be a relatively resistant rock, it can also be subjected to disintegration or breakage as you can see from the little plate-like structures here, which can eventually fall off, all right? So I hope this was actually informative. Oh, students, before you forget, remember, sometimes the term physical weathering may also be referred to as mechanical weathering. So whenever you hear the term physical or even mechanical weathering processes, we are in fact referring to the same thing, physical or mechanical. Keep that in mind for me, please. All right, the reason why they call it mechanical because you are, in fact, depending upon processes um, from the environment, which is associated with, like, say, um, pressure, temperature, even aspects of um, immense heat and stuff like that can facilitate this, these particular processes. All right. So I hope this was informative. All right. Take care.